Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be making 3D food art on this canvas panel here. So I was feeling a very inspired by some of these pictures by this very talented artist. They make these 3D desserts and I want to really make one. They even made pasta which is so cool. So I want to attempt this so let's get straight into it. For my 3D food art, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make a pizza or if I wanted to make an adorable heart-shaped cake. And as you can tell by the adjectives I just used, I did choose to make the cake. So I went ahead and brought in a bowl to draw a circle for the plate and then I cut out a symmetrical shaped heart. That way I could have something to trace over to try and make sure the cake didn't look wonky. And then after that, it was finally time to bring in the paints. I decided to go over everything with a little layer of a acrylic gesso. I knew that the wood would just soak everything straight up into it if I didn't lay down a little bit of a base. So I decided to use this pretty much as my white and then I tried to make some shading. I wanted the plate to look like it had a lip to it, kind of like a rim around it. So I made the brightest part that rim and then I went ahead in with some grays to make it look like there was shadows in between the cake and what's going to be the rim. And I think that that was turning out so fun. I was already adding in some 3D elements to this cake, which I am so excited about. And then I went around and painted the rim very carefully to try and keep it nice and crisp. I really kind of want to make this an optical illusion and make sure that it looks like a cake on a plate. Once I had the plate mostly done, I went ahead in and did some touch-ups to brighten it up and make sure that it looked a little more realistic and smooth. And then after that, it was time to start working in the middle of the cake, which is obviously the heart. So I added in some gesso to that as well. That way, hopefully the wood won't interfere with my spackle. I don't want the spackle to just slide or fall right off of the wood. So I thought, let's just add a layer of gesso just in case that makes a difference. And we will never know, but I feel like it worked really well and then I just added a pink rim around this that way when I added my spackle if I miss any edges it won't be too obvious and I can keep a neater edge and here's how it's turning out but now it's time to bring in the showstopper which is the spackle aka the forbidden frosting this stuff looks exactly like a giant tub of frosting and I'm going to be spreading it with these palette knives just like it is real frosting and so now I'm going ahead and mixing up my paint color here I want to make sure that the frosting is a vibrant but light pink color that I can use all over this cake. I made a pink spackle cake before in another video and I loved how it turned out. So when deciding what color to use, pink just couldn't escape my mind. And look how satisfying this stuff is to spread. This is the most satisfying art project ever. I have so much fun when I do these because there's just so much satisfaction in spreading this forbidden frosting everywhere. It's so satisfying. There's literally no other way to describe it. It's just instant gratification. But so I just worked to fill in the entire spackle shape here. I wanted to smooth it out but leave a little bit of texture to really make the 3D shine through because if I just smooth it all out that really defeats the point of adding in the spackle. So I added in a little texture to it to make sure that you could tell that it was 3D. And now it's time for the fun and chaotic part which is is the piping. So I just put that same color right into a piping bag and now it's time to actually pipe little designs all over the cake. This is the hardest part for me because I'm not a piping expert by any means. I think this is the fourth time I've done this at all. So it's really fun for me to just experiment with how these different little piping tips make designs turn out and I could really use some studying on how to do this to make my cakes look even more fun and realistic. But for now I just kind of winged it and did whatever designs came to mind. So I started out by making this little rim of little dots everywhere and now it's time to go ahead in with the same color again and do some swirls. I wanted to keep my color palette limited because I knew that if I could I would just add like 50 different colors all over this and because it's already art of a cake I don't want to go too abstract. I really wanted it to be right on the nose so that you knew exactly what I was doing. Even 
even though I'm using spackle instead of icing. So then I just added in some other fun design elements to really make sure it looked full. I still felt like it didn't have enough like special touches to it. So I just put in these little frilly ones all over the place and just filled in the cake one more layer just to make sure that it really felt full and that it had a whole bunch of different textures and patterns all over it. It was looking pretty crazy. The only way I can really describe it is like a prom dress from the 80s, but I still think it was looking cute. So then it was time to add the finishing touches. I always like to do little white swirls. That way I can put some fruit in them and I think that that was a good touch to it. I decided to add six in there to make it symmetrical and then it was time to find out what fake fruit I could put on top of this cake to make it even cuter. I thought cherries would be the perfect fruit to fill all six spaces, but then an, a little emergency happened and I found out that there are only five of each fruit, so I went ahead and put the cherries on, but then I was one short. And at first I was like, maybe I can just make one, but instead I decided to kind of do a mix of cherries and strawberries. That way I didn't have to do any other projects for this and I felt like it was looking really good, but could use some sprinkles. So I decided to just put sprinkles all over the frilly parts of the cake to add in little pops of color because I could not resist to make it just that extra bit cuter. And then I took a toothpick to just secure it all into the spackle. That way no sprinkles would fall off when I move it later and hang it up on the wall. And I'm using some glue to just add a couple little loose sprinkles on the plate. I wanted it to look like these sprinkles kind of, you know, sprinkled over the edge. And here is how it turned out. It is super cute and I think that it looks so good and I cannot wait to see this hang up on a wall but I'm gonna let it dry for 24 hours and then show you guys the final results and here they are here's how it turned out it's completely dry now and this is what it looks like I think it looks so cute and I love 3D and interactive art. I love that it looks like a little heart cake on a plate and it has those real 3D elements to it. Even the cat was interested to come check it out. But here it is also in the sunlight so you can see how beautiful these colors really are. And I love the plasticky look of the fake fruit. I love how it shines. I just feel like it adds that extra cuteness and design to it. But here's how it is and I think it's so cool. That way you can see how thick it really is. Is, but it turned out so cute and it's gonna look so crazy cool on a wall and I feel like I could make so many cool versions of this idea of 3D art on a plate and here's how it looks hanging up. It's super cool but let me know what you think about this project and you should totally try it out because making 3D art is so fun even the cat thinks so. Bye!